Welcome back. I'm with uh, Brajan Kani. He's my guest here and we are celebrating his life. And uh, I'm very happy to see that you are in fine, good spirits yourself. <laughs> you know, because uh, we know our actors can switch it on and off. You see, you might you might turn on me and just be another character that I wouldn't know how to handle. <laughs> it is very important that I look after John Kani, not the artist. Yes, it is extremely important that my wife Umandi still has a husband called John. Yes, my children still have a father who's called John. This John Kani has never been to my house. I'm a father, I'm a husband, I'm an uncle, I'm a neighbor. Yes. So that I guard jealously. I'm only John Kani, the star, whatever you want to call it, when I'm in my dressing room, when you see my name on a poster or in movies and television and all, that part I don't go home with. If you work as a lawyer, you're not a lawyer at home. Absolutely. If you work as a teacher, you're not a teacher at home. Uh, you, know, you know the you story, what I like about mm. your story and your, your life story, that is, is, is that whether it's just a, a, a social interaction with you um, or an exchange of greetings, one is left feeling good about themselves, you know, after that short interaction. At least that, that's my memory of you. That's, that's all that I carry. I also feel good just bumping into a friend or a person or someone talking. You know, we were filming in this series in, in uh, Wallander in Cape Town. And there was a young actress who was in the series. And there were these old ladies standing there because they know this lady from television mm. series. And they were trying to get just a, 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 a small little picture. And she was too busy saying, oh, please, I'm too busy. And I said, hold it, ma'am. Hold it. Just give the camera. I said, stand next to me. And said, we both took the picture. And then the ladies left. I said, how long was that? She said, about two or three seconds. Yes. I said, that's all they asked. Yes. Just two or three seconds. That's all they ask from yes. you in return, in your support of your work, in the support of your life, your health. Sure. When people think about John Ghani, they say, oh, he's doing so great things. That is a prayer that says to God, to the ancestors, please keep him going on and doing this great thing. Because things. you live in the hearts and the minds of those people. Brother. Absolutely. And, and you were saying something before the break, which I found is very important to explore with you. You said, you know, in today's times, from your observation, you find that a lot of young people make, spend time, invest their time studying towards different degrees or training for this and the other. And then thereafter, they sit back and hope that things will come to them, which is not necessarily the case with what you and your colleagues had to push for. What are you saying there? What is the message you want to convey to many young people, including the ones who are in the artistic world? Once you become an artist, musician, painter, sculptor, actor, performer, in whatever genre you are in, you stand as a business, you stand as a commodity, you stand as a brand. If that brand is not kept alive out there in the media, if the marketing strategy is weak, if the business plan and projection for the future, what's going to happen, is not clear, then you're, not going, you're going to struggle. Nobody would come to buy product in your store if you haven't told them about the store, mm. if you haven't advertised the store, if you haven't advertised your product, you haven't kept the quality of the product you place there. Therefore, nothing comes to you, you go and get it. You go out, as I always say, you go on your knee and pray and ask God to help you. You want to make a success of your career. God says, right, I'll give you a blessing. Now get up and go get it. Because if you sit down, God's going to say, but I said go. I'm going to help you in the process. Yeah. So that is the, 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 the challenge we have, is that we immediately move out and we get a job on television and series and soapies and all that. And it somehow becomes a job that I work for this particular production and every day I go there, we shoot these episodes and I'm playing the same character which is structured and uh, sort of dictated mostly by the, the viewers themselves where this character must go. And I can know that inside this individual, there's a, young, th there's a talent that needs to grow, mm. that wants to blossom, that wants to go out there in the but world and experience. So we have to make these choices that, okay, now, 
it's time for me to look after me. Here's another thing. You say so many wonderful things and your work speaks for itself, but you don't complain that much. You know, you've had some nasty experiences in your life and uh, we haven't said much uh, about those simply because of you, the storyteller, not amplifying or emphasizing that part where you got attacked following an appearance alongside a, a white performer, a white woman that, that you kissed on stage <laughs> and people took exception to that. You, you were nearly killed. I mean, uh, you know, but, but it's not something that you carry as a badge of honor. But in any event, it happened and it must have disrupted your career somewhat, but you picked yourself up and continued. Just tell me a little bit about that experience. Look, life is fantastic. It's got these hiccups, it's got these stumbling blocks, it's got these obstacles. They are all part of the journey towards your success. So when the obstacle appears, you take it as a challenge and flatten it out and move. What is important is you having made it. As one boxer said, I take the eight count on my knee, I stand up and I win the 12th round. Yes. Yes. boxing match. Yes. That's it. So you cannot focus m solely on uh, this happened to me. I suffered when during the struggle, this is what I do. I've been in this profession for over 50 or 40 years. That's not the issue. The issue is what is the next step you are taking. Yeah. Of course, you know, during the apartheid years, he used to be arrested. We used to be disrupted in performances. Winston John and I spent 15 days in solitary confinement for doing Sizwe Banzi. He's dead. I was nearly sort of killed. I survived an assassination after I did Miss Julie with Sandra Prinslow mm. and all those things. But those were my challenges. Those made me a stronger person. Those made me a better human being because I know the cost of this democracy. I know the price we paid. And I value something I invested money, invested mm. my life mm. into. When I speak to my children, I say, don't you ever take for granted that there's dinner tonight. I had to go out. I had to go out yes. and sacrifice yes. and do a lot of things so that you make sure that your lives are better. And don't you ever think you're going to live a better life because you're John Carney's children. You are not John Carney. Yes. I'm your father. Yeah. You yeah. go out there, find your area of operation, do the best you can. Now, the world paid attention over that time. Um, you went overseas and you get invited all the time there and they say, John, you know, talk South Africa, I'm sure the first person they call is, where's John? And, <laughs> <laughs> and also seek advice from you, I'd like to believe, on, on who to cast in place or who the script writers and other people uh, that they can involve in productions. Must be a wonderful experience, but it comes with the mileage and the effort that you've put in. How do audiences in the UK, in the US, and elsewhere in the world receive your work? In South Africa, we don't have a star industry. Here, you can work as hard as you can, mm. you can be as popular and mm. famous as you are for that particular production you are doing. At the end of that production, you're out of the rudder. In your next production, you don't just have a following that would remember you from the last production because you do not work constantly. There are no theater companies or film companies or television companies and studios that keep you working all the time. In London or in America, you can just say, Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible 16, sold out, is going to make nearly a billion dollars mm. because they know there are people who grew up mm. being the fans of Tom Cruise, being the fans of Denzel Washington, uh, fans of Morgan Freeman, uh, friends of Sidney Poitier, and they, they become your base and they always will come to see your work. So you then become what the Americans call a bankable star. Yes. Meaning that if you are in a production, you will immediately. Now when you do a movie, for instance, like Captain America, uh, Civil War, which I played King T'Chaka, or Black Panther, which I played the king, the father of the Black Panther, the producers there, when their names are on the table, they ask, what would John Carney bring? if he's in this movie. Yes. We're talking money here, we're yes. not talking yeah. nonsense. Yeah. And they say, we got Africa. 
we got Africa yes. because Africa will come and see what yes. is in. Yes. We've got uh, we, we, we've got Europe. We've got we've got the the, the, the Africans in the diaspora. We, we we've got South America. Yeah. The people by near of this name will come. That is your buying and, power. And, and you know the other thing is what what I think we do is we wait for the world to celebrate you and then we join thereafter. And and for some reason, as people who come from a difficult past with the struggle and all that, we actually don't like it if you bomb at the box office <laughs> in the case of a movie. <laughs> then we hold it against you. And so all of the stars that you mentioned have had their fair share of movies that did not work, isn't it? Of course, we've got a list of plays and movies, television that didn't work yeah. with the big stars yeah. in them. They don't take that as a reflection of who they are Absolutely. or their ability. I normally say to young actors, if you go for an audition and you don't get it, it's by way, no means, a measure of your talent and your capabilities and abilities. You just didn't get it because they're looking for someone here, here, different. Here's another thing. Television, you haven't really done that much of TV. I mean, you have done some, but I wouldn't say to the same extent as the amount of time that you've been in the cultural, artistic world. I write my work. I tell stories. That, for me, is critically important. Television is already set up. I'm a pawn that comes in to be used in that particular time. And mostly television, uh, when I created Ingaba, 208 episodes for, uh, for, for uh, another sort of uh, yeah. broadcasting station, it took 18 months of my time mm. to appear every evening in every episode to be part of the writing, part of the sort as an executive producer, part of the meetings that are endless yes. in producing yes. television programs. So I couldn't do the work I love most, one writing, theater and film. Film is fantastic, you know, you just go out, do that movie, spend six months or three months or eight, 18 weeks, you finish and you move into something yeah. else. So television for me- And it's just, it's just it's it's endless work, right? It's endless and, and it keeps me from doing other things. Yeah. So I will do television, but I always want a structured contract that says, I'll give you 20 episodes and I go. And, and I this is what people like George Clooney, people like uh, Brett Pitt, people like Lawrence Fishman, they're doing that now. They've moved into television series, but on short contracts sure. to help the boosting the ratings and they move out. Now, you said you are the father, the husband, the neighbor, the uncle, and everybody's uncle and everybody's brajon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I suppose it's wonderful for you to be working with your son in recent times and throw in Nelson Mandela now. You know, you had a, a very interesting coincidence of your work together with your son. Tell me. Yes, um, I have seven children, four sons and uh, three daughters. I have seven grandchildren. Atandwa is in the list, is number five. Therefore, in the dispensing of love, <laughs> he got a smaller spoon yeah. because he's got others ahead of yeah, him. Yeah. He ended up in this crazy profession, which I don't know why, because if he had asked me, I would have discouraged him. Because yes. I, I wouldn't know whether he really has a talent or he just wants to be like my father. Yeah. And I noticed him because I directed him at Vich University. Yeah. He was doing Othello. Yeah. That's it. And then I directed him again in uh, the island with Netma Ramabulane. Then I directed him again in Sizoban's is Dead. Then I saw him do the young Nelson Mandela in um, Long Walk to yeah. Freedom. And then we were shooting the Black Panther. They needed a, an actor who would look like me, younger, because yes. the first the, when you first see the Black Panther, it's the young prince, yes, yes. King, King Tichaka. Uh -huh. And then I didn't know he had gone to a digital, because I didn't know where he was. Yeah. And somehow the director said, that one, that, that, that on, on, the, the, on, on the DVD, yes. seeing all the actors, yeah. because he does look like John Gunn. Yeah. And someone <laughs> said, he is his son. <laughs> <laughs> so Chadwick Boson and Atandwa are my sons, one is my son in the movie, and one is my son in reality. Yeah. And when I looked both of them, there was an uncanny resemblance yes, yes. between the two of yeah. them. And of course, I gave the voice for Long Walk to Freedom yeah. on the audio yeah. and uh, conversations with myself. I was in Montreal, he gives me a call and he says, you're not gonna believe it, I've been asked to voice uh, Nelson Mandela's letters from prison. 
wow. which completed the cycle uh -huh. of the Kani dynasty, yes. recording the voice of Nelson Mandela in his three major works. Wonderful story. I didn't even go to the awards and oh, other no, issues. That's a story for another time. Yeah, 75 years of age, you're still sprightly, alive, full of verve. I'm happy for that. What are you grateful for at this time so that you know South Africa can know what their icon feels like today? It's the smile I see when I walk down the street and an old lady says, oh, thank you for your work. It's a young man who says, I studied your book. I passed my matric because I passed nothing but the truth. Mm. It's another one who says, you don't rem remember you visited our school and you spoke about the value and the importance of education. And now I've graduated. I'm a lawyer. I'm a doctor. I'm an accountant. It's those little acknowledgments. They're very tiny that people seem to think I made a contribution. It's the love and the respect I earn from my own peers yes. in this world. Uh -huh. It's the love on my family. Well, and no, th those are the people that make me feel that's good to be alive sure. in South Africa today. As Stevie Wonder would have said, John Carney, I just called to sing. To sing. I, I love, love you. you. Thank you very Thank much you. for having <laughs> been my guest. I appreciate very much. Thank you, my brother. And that's uh, Bro John, Dr. John Kani, our guest on the show tonight. And that's all we had for you this evening. And thank you for joining us on the Modisa Network. Tune again tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. We'll be looking at the fourth industrial revolution and the advent of artificial intelligence with uh, the Vice Chancellor of UJ, Professor Tzilidji Marwala.